Okay, welcome back to Mocha Don is Right. I am Mocha Don, and we have a really fun show for you today. So that crazy judge who was appointed by a Republican governor, Kemp, down in Georgia, that crazy judge has said that Fannie Willis can stay on the case of Donald Trump if she gets rid of her boyfriend, Wade. I assume he means off the case. So boyfriend Ray Wade has been booted off the case or he's resigned the case. And that's actually great news for Donald Trump because Donald Trump now, not only does he have an issue for appeal that could get the whole thing tossed out should it become a problem, but he, he, he also gets to keep the idiot Fanny in charge of things. And Fanny is truly an idiot. Meanwhile, it's all good news for Donald Trump because the judge has shown himself to be a complete whack job. How can you split the baby? How can you throw out one of the two corrupt lovers who have been defrauding the state of Georgia of a million dollars to prosecute Donald Trump for non-existent crimes, no actual RICO conspiracy, and then we're going to show you a clip Megan Kelly did on that that's very informative. But then after that, we have to talk about the cannibal barbecue. You just can't make this stuff up, folks. The cannibal barbecue who is now running Haiti after the prime minister of Haiti is now gone from office, probably gone from the country. The country is now being run by a cannibal named Barbecue who, if you actually listen to him, is a fairly reasonable guy. He's a former police officer, and he, he wants the country run by people who are elected by people who live in the country and who actually also lives in the country. You see, the current PM in Haiti was installed by foreigners, the United States being the main one, by the way, but installed by foreigners. And the guy, the guy isn't even really a Haitian. He's just someone that was installed to shove uh, the views of other countries down the throats of Haiti. So, I mean, I, real, I feel really bad for Haiti. U.S. Marines are deployed there, evacuating uh, the embassy down to its minimum staff. But we're going to do a bit from Tim Pool on that. And I disagree with Tim on some of this. But first, let's hear the Megyn Kelly bit because it is hysterical and, and ultimately it's really good for Donald Trump. What's your reaction to the ruling? Well, I, you know, as a practical matter, I think it's the best thing that could have happened to Trump because and the co-defendants uh, because she's I mean, she she's just destroyed in terms of her reputation, which she deserves by the way she conducted herself. But she's still in the case. And my thing with this from the beginning, Megan, has been I've tried to explain to people on the basis of this sprawling uh, blunderbuss indictment that she's incompetent, you know, that she she's indicted a RICO case that's not a RICO. She's tried to do an overarching conspiracy that's not a conspiracy. And, you know, everybody sort of says, oh, OK, well, that's a and then we see this situation where you know you get an up close view on how these guys uh, operate and you have to ask yourself after watching this performance do you really think these guys can run a rico case which is a, a sophisticated criminal prosecution so from trump's perspective it seems to me it's like a triple play for him because she's a tainted prosecutor this is an issue that I believe you can appeal. I heard you and Alan talking about this at the end. I think you can appeal this under Georgia law. So he also gets the delay that he's looking for, but he gets to keep her in the case and she'll screw the case up. So I don't see how, you know, legally, I feel very differently about it. Legally, I, I think the judge is off his rocker. I've never heard of a thing where you have a conflict situation and the judge is oozing off every page is that it, there are lingering questions, continuing questions, the cloud over it, the, the you know, the scent of mendacity. Um, it, those are the cases where you disqualify the person. 
she's got a lot of problems here. She's got potential federal investigation. She's got potential state investigation. She's got professional investigation. And she's got a lot of motives that are her personal motives that may collide with some of the things that would be best for the case and be best for Fulton County. That's the kind of case where there's such an appearance of impropriety, the lawyer's got to go. And given that, a reasonable person could think, oh, the, the benefit to her or to him will be ongoing or could resume even their, their romantic relationship, which is like, what are you saying? All the proof of the prior conflicted behavior is right here in front of you on a silver platter. Whether it's ongoing or potentially likely to resume is not the standard for determining whether there's an actual conflict or the appearance of one. Yeah, this is this is like, a, 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 with all due respect to Dr. Phil, this is a trial, not Dr. Phil, right? So right. the judge's responsibility, believe it or not, is the case. Um, Nathan and Fanny are going to have to work their relationship out on their own, and they'll have to go to another forum for that, right? But his job is is the is the appearance of impropriety in a judicial proceeding, which can't be erased by taking out. If you've if you've now developed a record where you have two people in collusion, who there's very powerful evidence that they misled the court, even if the judge shies away from drawing the conclusion of that, but like lays out every dot for everyone with an IQ of 11 to be able to connect that that's what they did, right? Um, it, it doesn't solve the problem by taking away one of the people who was colluding, leaving the other one in. And again, that's a layup to remove the lawyer. Uh, uh, Jonathan Turley was on Fox earlier this morning, and he has such a way of putting these things. He's entertaining to listen to. And this is listen to how he described the judge's decision here. Sat one. It's like, you know, finding two people in a, in a bank vault and taking one off to jail. I mean, it, the question is, you know, the appearance uh, problem that the judge identified with regard to Wade uh, was directly related to his relationship with Willis. Only one of them uh, was disqualified. And so that's going to lead to these questions. I mean, well, why should Willis escape that same penalty? It, it, the opinion leaves this feeling like the court went and shot the wounded. Right. And that's exactly the point. The judge thinks he's 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 doing relationship counseling for these two prosecutors. He should have tossed at least both of them. He should have probably tossed the whole office and he probably should have tossed both of them in jail for contempt for the perjury they committed right in front of his very eyes in this very court that was proven with evidence. All right. <clears throat> On to cannibalism in Haiti. The prime minister has gotten out of office. He's gone the Haitian government doesn't really exist anymore. And now what we're going to get is we're going to get Tim Pool kind of laying it out for us. But I have to tell you, the cannibal actually seems to be the reasonable one here. He at least seems to care about his country. Let's take a listen. The situation in Haiti is getting extremely dire to the extent that the United States sent in the Marines to evacuate some of those from the U.S. Embassy and provide security. Today, U.S. Marines flying in forces to beef up security around the embassy and to help evacuate non-essential staff. The situation on the ground is becoming increasingly violent as armed gangs attempt to topple the government, leaving innocent people, including some Americans, in the crossfire. Here's ABC's Matt Rivers. Tonight, with Haiti on the verge of collapse, the U.S. military evacuating non-essential embassy personnel overnight, choppering in Marines to reinforce the embassy. The State Department urging Americans to leave as gangs launch coordinated attacks across the country against the presidential palace and the interior ministry, multiple police stations set on fire, gang soldiers showing off stolen flak jackets. The government now extending a state of emergency and Caribbean leaders calling an emergency meeting Monday for what they call a, quote, dire situation. And tonight, ABC News speaking to the man behind it all, gang leader Jimmy Cherissier, known as Barbecue. He says the first step in the fight is to overthrow Ariel Henry, and then we start the real fight against the corrupt oligarchs and politicians. 
the unelected U.S.-backed Henri took charge when President Jovenel Moïse was assassinated two and a half years ago. Poverty, violence, and hunger soaring on his watch. Now even the U.S. pressuring him to step aside. Barbecue is Haiti's most notorious gang leader, a former police officer responsible for an explosion of violence. Even if Henri steps down, it's not clear who takes over or when new elections would take place. In the meantime, hospitals closed. Thousands of criminals have been freed. Access to food or clean water increasingly scarce. Ordinary Haitians, innocent people, suffering. And Rachel, Barbecue explicitly told me that if Ariel Henry resigns, he will call for an immediate ceasefire and halt his attacks on police. And the reason why this story is so big is that it directly correlates with politics here in the United States. Several years ago, Donald Trump was accused of calling El Salvador and Haiti and other countries ish whole nations. And I'm going to refrain from swearing here. And in response, liberals and Democrats bent their spines backwards to defend Haiti. Conan O'Brien flew to a high security resort in Haiti, drank from a coconut and said, it's so beautiful here. Trump is wrong. They ran some campaign called Haiti is great already and asked you to buy T-shirts. Many prominent liberals wore these T-shirts. I'll pull them up in just a little bit. The interesting thing, at the same time, Donald Trump was being accused of saying this. And again, we don't know that he actually did say it was a private meeting. Someone accused him of saying it. He also said El Salvador was uh, also among these very awful places to be. And I find it fascinating because as of today, the breaking news is that cannibal gang leaders or particularly a cannibal gang leader nicknamed Barbecue, who has been seen on video eating human, is now the most powerful man in Haiti. People are running in fear. There's videos of people being mercilessly beaten. Now, a lot of this is hard to vet. What we do know is that this crisis in Haiti has been ongoing since well before Trump was accused of saying anything bad about it. Now, there's some concerns because of this crisis. The United States has let in hundreds of thousands of Haitian refugees, and I think it's fair to call them refugees considering cannibal gang leaders beating and eating people. So yes, when you're fleeing that country, you're a refugee. And there's an interesting argument to be made for people in Haiti. It may be your, your, best, uh, your, your closest nation, the best chance of survival could be the United States. Now, there are certainly other areas in uh, the Caribbean they could go for sure. We can make that argument. But the bigger issue is that there is no vetting process for the criminal aliens entering the southern border today. And many are concerned that 100,000 plus unvetted individuals from Haiti have crossed the southern border, many of which may be rival gang members and criminals and murderers who are fleeing the corruption and extremism of barbecue, they call him. The big picture here, my friends, Donald Trump offered you a view of the world. And in this, we got two different outcomes, El Salvador and Haiti. In El Salvador, Nayib Bukele took over. He got elected, became president, and immediately cracked down on the gangs. Today, El Salvador is considered to be one of the safest nations in the Western Hemisphere. So they say, at the very least, they say it is possibly the safest country in Latin America. But this is only six years since Donald Trump said it was an ish hole, allegedly. What happened? Well, especially with the news that Bitcoin has cracked a new record high. Nayib Bukele cracked down on the gangs, began arresting all of these criminals, locking them up. Haiti was defended by the left and Democrats, and they said it was fine. I want you to imagine what this country, the United States, will be in this worldview. Donald Trump says these countries are awful. Make your choice. Those who defended Haiti and those who criticize El Salvador. This is the fascinating thing. While people like Conan O'Brien and Bill Maher bent their spines till they cracked just to hate Donald Trump. You can see what happens in Haiti as videos emerge of a man eating human. Now, the reason why they do that is not because they like to eat people. It's to strike fear into the hearts of others that they want you to know they are so depraved they will eat your corpse. And then you have those in the corporate press here in America who said Naib Bukele was a monster 
was an authoritarian, was a despot. And El Salvador is safe, comfortable. Their wealth rising. People are re remigrating, leaving the United States to go back to El Salvador. In fact, there are people from the United States who want to be in El Salvador because of the great transformation that Naib has brought to his country, lifting it up in ways many thought not possible. The corporate press would have you live in Haiti. They would have you own nothing and eat the bugs. And that's the Democrat support base. Well, and Tim Pool is definitely right about that. You, you basically are, are looking at two countries, Haiti and El Salvador, that are really two sides of the same coin, and, and they sort of represent the United States. In Haiti, you have the world of the left, where governments propped up with BS, governments that, that aren't in tune with the people. They're put into power. They violate the rights of the people. The people rise up. And in the case of Haiti, it just happens to be they chose a cannibal named Barbecue. But it seems to me like the guy genuinely cares about his country and he's tired of this BS being forced upon the people. And so you've had a revolution in Haiti and people have been killed and apparently people have been eaten. In El Salvador, you had a similar situation where the government just wasn't in tune with the people. It was, in fact, a leftist government. And that leftist government is gone, voted out by the people. The people put in a conservative government, a very Trumpian government, that locked the criminals up, something the left refuses to do. And now El Salvador is doing very, very well. The crime is way, way down. You saw a similar thing in Brazil where sort of a, a more conservative, a little bit more right wing president came in and, and gave the people the right to keep and bear arms again. Crime began to plummet. And now the left is screwing that country up again. So you really have to choose between law and order or civil war. Those are really the two choices. If you have law and order and you have an honest judiciary and you have people with free and fair elections electing their representatives, you end up with peace and some sanity. And the left gets to put its point of view out. But that point of view isn't what most of the people want. There, there'll be some accommodations for the left for sure. But you can't have lawlessness. You can't have no police. You can't have not prosecuting criminals while you restrict the rights of the law-abiding citizen, while you let criminals out without any bail for violent crimes, and you don't prosecute them for their gun crimes, you can't then be prosecuting law-abiding citizens for defending themselves. You can't have that. The only place I disagree with Tim Pool really is when I listen to the cannibal barbecue, a former police officer, he actually seems to me to care about his country and to want the right thing. No, I don't agree with his tactics. No, we shouldn't eat people. No, you know... We shouldn't take the law into our own hands. But if the judiciary fails, if the criminals are being let go, people will have no choice but to take the law into their own hands. And they will have no choice but to rebel. The question I have for you is, do you want that in the United States? Because that's the way we're going if we keep people like Joe Biden and Merrick Garland in office. Criminals. They are both criminals. Anyway, God bless. Please like, comment, subscribe. We need more subscribers. 80% of the people who watch the channel are not subscribed, and we need you to subscribe. So God bless. Thank you so much, and you have a fantastic weekend.